PSD with you. Tutorials on gaming. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install packages in FreeBSD even though there's no internet connection. So in this example and using VirtualBox, I'm just going to turn off networking. Right, we'll just start it up and I'll do an installation without internet access. Make sure you're using the DVD uh, ISO, either in the real machine or your virtual box, because that will contain all the packages you need to get up and going. Without that, you're not going to get very far on the small CD ISO. So, we're booting into it, and we'll go through the usual install, as I've shown you many, many times. But this one to be slightly different is that I left the virtual box menu at the top to show you that You'll need to take out your disk, then put it back in after you've rebooted into the installed machine. So you go to the key map, continue. Name for the machine is test. Uh, I don't want to select anything other than ports and source and lib32. You need to have ports and source, just in case you want to do by ports later. Uh, defaults, yes, yes, and yes, GPT, and that's it, you know, it, it's nothing more than, than we've done before. The reason why I'm doing this is because um, a subscriber of mine asked me a question is that he wanted to know how to install FreeBSD and packages and get everything up and going without an internet connection, and I thought to myself, what an interesting question this is. It's something I've never thought of before. You know, I've always had an internet connection when I've installed FreeBSD. And I thought, if you ever did come to a point, how would you do it? How would you easily just install off your DVD image or your DVD drive in a real machine? Yeah, and so I looked into it, and there were, you know, there was little, there was little tidbits of information here and there and everywhere. And I really didn't find anything which solve the problem for me. So I did a little bit of digging around and experimentation and I finally found a way to do it. Now, it, it's not the most elegant of ways and there is an easier way and I, I realised after I did it what the way would be and that is to simply um, edit the existing file or a copy of the existing file. You'll, you'll see when, when we get to it. But the end result works, so uh, that's fine. Right, we're just going to skip to the end of this install. Uh, I don't want to keep you waiting too long. Okay, nearly finished. Right. Password for the uh, administration account. And again. Uh, in this instance, we say no. We don't want IPv4, no do IPv6. Go down to select the time zone. And United Kingdom. Set date, set time. It's going to alter this a little bit. That's it. Um, right. We don't want SSHD. I uh, don't want dump dev. We're going to leave mouse on there. And that's it. Just going to disable DD trace, disable send mail, and syslog D and clear temp. Add users, of course. Again, you know, it's, it's, it's what we've done on here plenty of times. Wheel and defaults for everything. Password diddly diddly diddly. and again. And no and yes and no. Right, that's finished. Uh don't take too long to install free BSD. And just uh no. 
Okay, we're going to reboot, and I'm going to take out the disk image in a minute. We time this right. Um, you should just get it right, okay. Yeah, see, just making sure it's out when we reboot into the system. Right, we're going to reboot into it. You can see the networking messages is that it's only picking up the uh, the local host address. Right. We're going to ping Google, and you see there's no internet connection at all. It's completely uh, isolated, which is what we want. Clear the screen. Right. Now, there's going to be a lot of command line activities in this one, so you have to bear with me. First, we're going to make a directory. We can call it anything you want, and... Um, we're going to call it packages. Now, I should have called it something else. In, in hindsight, I should have called it, I don't know, offline or repository or whatever, but we call this one packages. It's not the best description, and uh, you, you best off choose something else so you don't confuse yourself. So once that's done, we need to mount it. We need to mount the DVD image to the newly created uh, directory. So packages, oh, 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 CD1. It was at this point I realized I hadn't reinserted the DVD, so it was trying to mount something which wasn't there. So let's go to the menu. So remember, you must mount the DVD for this to work, either in a virtual box or virtual machine and in real life on real hardware. So you you put the disk back in. Easily done. Right, so we'll try again. We'll mount the DVD to the newly created uh, directory. Should work this time. And there we go. Just going to check it by uh, DF. There you go. Look. Packages is mounted. On CD0. Now, oh, spelling mistake. Now we go back to, we're going to, okay, we're gonna, we went into the packages directory. And you can see it's all displayed all nicely uh, for us to use. Right, well, now we're just going to create a new directory. And this is so we can work on a copy of a key system repo file. So make dir-p. Uh, USR local etc pkg repos. I'm going to copy uh, the the system uh, repos configuration file from etc or etc pkg freebsd.conf to this new um, file, new new directory we just created. I'm not the world's fastest typer, so you have to bear with me. All right, just to check. that it's in there, we'll quickly just uh, change directory to this uh, to where this new file is, and there you are, look, ls, there we go. There's a new file that we've got in the new directory that we created. We're going to edit this file, and we're going to, we're going to delete, or, I mean, I could have commented it out, but in this case, we'll delete. We'll delete some areas that we don't need and change one thing that we do need. I'm just going to change this enable to um, no. Going back to the the mounted uh, directory from the DVD, if you list within the packages folder and within the repos folder, you'll find freebsd underscore install underscore cdrom.conf. Now we want to copy this to the newly created backup um, directory, as it were.
So if we copy it to the USR local etc package repos folder. There we go. And that's the, what this newly copied one is what we want to work on. Now, if I do a quick PKJ update, you'll see it starts with a bootstrap and then it tells you it can't find anything. So we need to go into the FreeBSD install conf. You can call this file anything you want, by the way. I've just kept it at the original uh, title. If you go down to where it says URL, keep it as file, and we'll delete that, and you put in the name of the packages folder, the one that you could have called anything other than packages. It gets a bit confusing. So we'll save that and clear it. Now if we do PKG update now, it's found it, and it does update. So it's got 797 packages on the DVD. Not everything you want is there, but enough to get you going. And so if you do PKG install exorg, we can get going. So we can have a basic desktop up and running. In this case, I installed KDE Plasma. Uh, there's not every desktop available, but this is uh, one of the main ones that were. And there you go. So we've managed to install FreeBSD, uh, managed to tell it where the offline packages are, managed to get a desktop up and going uh, without internet access. Again, not everything is going to be available, and you are going to be limited to uh, what you can install. But if you wanted to do an offline install, this is the best way to do it. And because we made a, uh, we did the work on a copy of the system file, uh, if you then want to connect it to the internet later, you just simply uh, delete them two entries and it will go back to the system default. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Uh, I can't think of many instances where anyone would need to install offline, but just in case, there you go. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out, please consider subscribing, as this really helps me help you.